You know, it almost seems inevitable that case numbers in Ontario are going up, COVID-19 case numbers, that is, are going up. <clears throat> and what some experts are predicting that we are already in the second wave and the second wave has already begun because case numbers are going up and up and up. Uh, some health experts are predicting that by mid-October we'll be at a thousand plus cases per day. On Monday, it was 700. Yesterday, it was 500 and something. Today, it was 600 and something. So they seem to be fluctuating a little, but they do seem to be going up. And I think this is the second wave. We have already begun the second wave. It's coming slowly, um, although it is approaching very rapidly. And some health experts have also said that, you know, things will get worse before they get better. And I think that I, I think that's a very understandable point. That's true for anything. Whether, whether it's some kind of a disease, whether it's some kind of an illness, or whether it's just something personal for me. Uh, like, for example, when I quit smoking a little over four years ago, I felt like shit. And that's what everybody kept saying, that you will feel horrible before you start feeling better. And that's exactly what it was. So that's kind of like a comparison of COVID-19 and what's happening with the situation with COVID-19. It's going to get worse before it starts getting better. The Greater Toronto Area or the GTA might be going back into going back into a semi-lockdown, if you will, or go back to stage two or stage one of uh, the reopening plan. Uh, La Ronde, which is the amusement park in Montreal, has already closed down, or they will be closing their doors on the 3rd of October. They've been ordered by the government to close their doors. I think the same would have happened um, at, if, if Canada's Wonderland had opened, for example. So even if they had opened for a brief previous they, period, excuse me, I can't get my words out, I, I don't think they would have been able to generate as much revenue as they would throughout the entire season so it wouldn't have really made much difference whether they would have opened for just a couple of weeks and then had to close down again it almost seems like inevitable it almost just seems like there's something that 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 has to happen something that's bound to happen and it is already happening until a vaccine is developed and a, and a vaccine is under development unfortunately these things do take time it's not something that can happen instantly it's not something that can happen right away so, Generally speaking, vaccinations take anywhere from, you know, seven to ten years to develop. But because we are in a global pandemic, a vaccine is needed day before yesterday. However, unfortunately, even even with that, uh, even with that in mind, it's still a very, very complicated process. There are probably hundreds of steps involved before a vaccine can be released into the general public. And even then, even when a vaccine is released, even when a vaccine is available, um, not everybody's going to get vaccinated because it could be for religious reasons, it could be for medical reasons, you know, maybe allergies or so on and so forth, or there may just be, you know, those anti-vaxxer, anti-vaxxers or the quackheads, for the lack of a, I, I could use some more choice words, but I won't, um, who, who will refuse to vaccinate themselves or their kids, like they do with any, with anything else. You know, because of some misinformation that they've read on some quack doctor's website or they've heard on social media or just by word of mouth. And they've kind of convinced themselves on this misinformation that, you know, vaccinations cause more harm than good, which is obviously not true. Well, long story short, I mean, I could probably make an entire video about anti-vaxxers, but I won't because it's really not worth my trouble or my time. I have better things to do. I know maybe that sounds a bit arrogant, but hey. I really do. I really do have better things to do than to talk about a subject that really doesn't need that much attention. Anyway, case numbers are going up, but we still all have a part to do. We all have a part to do. We all have a part to play in this, and we are all in, we are all in this together. Um, we are in isolation, but we are in this together, and the only way we're going to combat this is by coming together and staying apart. So it's kind of like a kind of like a contradiction or a paradox, if you will, um, of some sorts. But I think, you know, COVID-19 is not going anywhere. Unfortunately, COVID's not going anywhere. It's it's going to be here to stay forever. Um, just like the flu virus, you know, influenza, if you will. You know, I'm, I'm sure that were back in the day when it was still fresh and new, you know, people thought, oh yeah, in a couple of years, it'll go away. We'll come up with a vaccine. And, you know, we have come up with flu shot vaccines, but there's so many variations of the flu shot or just of, uh, sorry, not the flu shot, but the flu itself, the flu virus itself, that it's almost impossible to develop a vaccine for it. However, it has become easier through research and through science and over the years that the flu has been around. And I think 
<clears throat> excuse me, and I think COVID-19 will become one of those things. It will become kind of like the flu where, you know, people will, in maybe five, ten years down the line, it'll be more like, a, oh yeah, I have, you know, I have COVID-19. I'm just going to stay home for a couple of days, just kind of sweat it out of my body, just drain it out of my body, and then I'll be back to work. Right now, it's kind of like the beginning of it. It's it, it's sort of like one of those things, the Spanish flu back in the uh, early, uh, back in the early 20th century, where you know, it did it did kill millions of people, and it was a global pand pandemic of that time. So it was almost a hundred years ago that we had a global pand pandemic, and a hundred years later, we have COVID nineteen. So I wonder what another hundred years will bring. <clears throat> Hopefully, nothing, and better days are coming. Just be patient, do your due diligence, do your part, stay apart, but stay together. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.